and girls, children of all ages, it is me, Duke CT, here on TalkShoe.com. Thank you so much for joining me here live on TalkShoe.com. Also, you can print this video or make this video. Hopefully, by that time, my panels for MagFest, my one panel for MagFest will be uploaded and such. And, you know, we can watch that as well. And hopefully you guys like that. But you can see this video also on the freaking also network.com. Also on mymedicexpression.com. Also on zipcast.com as well. YouTube.com slash DukeCT. Also on the Shutscast Studio forums. Also on that guy, the Bastards Radio forums. And anywhere and anywhere I can spread the message of the gospel that is my beautiful thoughts. Anyway, let's get started. Let's talk about TNA. Well, let's get out of the garbage first. Because there's a lot of things out there. I was going to plan to talk about what's going on. Let's talk about the wrestling stuff first. We'll talk a little bit about TNA, then WWE, and, and the Nintendo rep. But we got to get through the stuff before we get into first things first. Um, Remember TNA's lawsuit against Scott Steiner, the whole um, thing about publicly bas- Scott Steiner publicly bashing the company after he left? Uh, well, the judge uh, admitting the uh, from PW Insider that reported about Mike Johnson, TNA's lawsuit against Scott Steiner was this uh, la- a couple weeks ago, actually. And the Chancy Court of Nashville, the judge ruling is issuing the dismissal noted that it was being done in pre prejudice, meaning that TNA will be that the judge ruling issuing the dismissal noted that it was being done with pre, with pre, with prejudice, meaning that TNA will be barred from filling the lawsuit down the line re, and reopening the civil case. And the reason why they did because TNA sued Steiner back in 2012, claiming he breached his expired contract. Let me repeat that again. That Scott Steiner breached his expired contract by making by him making disparaging remarks about Total Nonstop Action, Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, and Bruce Pritchard, and many, many more. And and uh, and his response to this is that quote. <clears throat> Skyder denied that he ever agreed to not to disperse a company that speaking out against would breach his deal that he was involved exactly. It's um in response, Scott Steiner denied that he was ever agreed to to that ludicrous thing saying you can't make if you after you released by TNA, you can't say anything negative about Hulk Hogan and the people running TNA at the time. He said, you know, You know, um, and everything else that, uh, you know, he, he, that was a complete, um, craziness and such. Now that basically it is official, they are basically this, this, this thing has been dismissed. So it's hilarious that TNA once again falls short and fails once again and, um, uh, and, you know, continues to fail in this aspect. And I honestly, you know, at this point, it's another L for this company. And speaking of else, guess what else? Supposedly, TNA is uh, looking for, I believe, um, him. <clears throat> they're looking for, um, I believe, more investors because there were talks, in, in, supposedly talks with outside investors to put more money into TNA. Supposedly, TNA uh, John uh, Gerbrick supposedly said there's some, there's some Strategic partnerships take place, taking place with several major global media companies and investment firms about the company's next phase of growth. After this company's growth has been so regressed to a point that, honestly, it's gone to a microbe. I, I don't know what is going on with this company anymore. Is that why are they still going on at this point? TNA should, honestly, at this point, I'm surprised they're not gone with the Indiegogo campaign. I'm serious. Don't be surprised this actually comes to be a thing, ladies and gentlemen. TNA will, I will, by the end of 2016, you will see TNA do either an Indiegogo or GoFundMe or heck, a Kickstarter. Hey, 
So we'll get Asa or someone like that. Get Asa Hilarion here. And so we could maybe get him. We could do a Kickstarter nightmares on that. Just how much fun we could do tearing that thing apart. A Kickstarter with TNA. With them trying to raise funds, Suge. They're going to try to raise some funds. <laughs> oh, gosh. Could you imagine the, the price tiers? Well, let's have some fun, ladies and gentlemen. What would be the price tiers of TNA? What would be the tiers with TNA for the, for the final level? I think we'll probably be... I think a five dollar level will probably be the what do you call it, the Hobo Classic. Ten dollars will probably get them like say uh, internet access, you know, something that something like what the Indie Go campaign with uh, Channel also did with their whole, you know, crazy the whole pop quiz hot shot fiasco. I think that's going to happen there, but even with a more slimy and gruesome details, which at least for the most part. Um, you know what the funny thing is? Call me crazy, but I don't think TNA is going to actually. I don't think TNA is going to actually. If they did a Kickstarter or Indiegogo, I don't think they're going to even make that marker. I don't think they will actually get to that point. They will actually. I don't think they will make it. I think they will not actually make. You know, will hit their, their goal. I don't think they would. I don't think they would actually hit their goal. Because it would be... Because, honestly, no one buys their pay-per-views anymore. Nobody watched their shows. No one watched their shows. Do, they, I mean, their, their ratings have gone down to a point that when the... Um, like I say, Pops reruns of Days of Our Lives is beating Impact. And I guarantee you, Reruns of Days of Our Lives is a lot cheaper than bringing in a pro wrestling company, uh, pro wrestling and such. And even more crazy, Wale and Rick Ross is supposedly want to, um, according to uprocks.com, um, the smoking section, Rick, Wale and Rick Ross want to own a pro wrestling company. Let's see, let's get this thing up here. Yes, that's what they want to do. Um, that he wants to actually uh, to do uh, go and say, here's the tweets here. Yo. Wale uh, a wrestling company. Yes, says Wale says and everything else. Is it now TNA? They actually, this is actually here. They're saying, quote, on Twitter, say, can someone put TNA for me and my, put TNA for me and my friends? Uh, exactly. If me and Roger go in, I'm trying to get the Young Bucks, Ricochet, Osprey, Moose, ACH, Briscoes, and a gang of cold talent. They're actually talking about this. I don't think they're joking around. They might actually do it. He wants to buy a wrestling company. And he says right here at the end that he was just going to be like, you know what? I won't, he won't be booking, which is a smart thing, which is he's already ahead of the game here. He's going to get some professional seasonal people. So I would not be surprised he might do. You know what? I would like to see that happen if they actually did buy TNA. Uh, <laughs> you know, it would be interesting what they could do to save this product. Because right now, TNA needs something big, really shake things up to be a positive. It needs a lot of rehab. A lot of rehab. I'm not saying it's death. It, I mean, TNA, if it continues its whole path, is death. TNA is the path of death. It needs a revival. It needs a, um, um, you know, it, it needs a revival, um, like any other, uh, it needs a huge, huge revival. Uh, it needs a revival. It needs something big. It needs something. Uh, it needs a revival. It needs a revival like none of it. It needs a something like, like NXT. When NXT first came out, it was a joke. No one liked it. No one gave it respect. Um, no one gave it respect, nor dignity, nor anything else right there. I 
I mean, most people looked at TNA and they looked at it and said, um, no one, I wouldn't give this company any type of respect nor dignity because TNA doesn't deserve nor need it. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Then the NXT, no one liked it. But they went away. They they kept grinding with talent. They booked shows well, and it continued for a consistent amount of time. It built, and it built, and it built to one of the best companies. People will say, you know what? I watched WWE Network just for NXT, just not just for TakeOver, but the show itself. And you have what Brian Corbin's doing with the whole, like, you know, from people that like Brian Corbin, now he's, like, tacking on the indie famous, people are liking that. Everyone likes seeing what, let's see, Nakamura's going to come in, the King of Strong Style, taking out Sami Zayn. It's a great time to be an NXT fan. And it took a lot of hard work to get to that position. What is TNA going to do? What does TNA need to do that steps now? And I don't think Dixie Carter can do this. I don't think Dixie Carter has the gumption. In fact, it's so bad, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, supposedly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, um, you know, you have Kangle competed in the UK tour with a concussion. Um, yes, according to an interview with ESPN in the UK, while he was there on uh, tour, Kurt Angle claimed that he suffered a concussion in his um, uh, 120, his uh, January match in Manchester, UK with Drew Galloway, but still wrestled his next two nights against Bobby Roode and Bobby Lashley. Jeez Louise, this is... I know people say it, but it is 2016. And you're letting Kurt Angle, a guy who's barely held together with gut, with duct tape, well, bubble gum, uh, bubble gums and duct tape, and just about to just basically fall apart. And you have him wrestle full stop with a concussion. Of all the information going on with the CTE, the brain scans, there is no excuse. And then you have Dixie Carter call on Taylor and say she cares about her employees. Boom. Ooh, shit, she does not care at all. She doesn't. What type of a person would legitimately, after a person gets a concussion, would would actually would do this while Kurt Angle, who has been hurt, who has numerous injuries, in fact, she had, he had to get rid of a tumor on his neck last year. Surgically removed to have tumor and such. Then again, I'm not surprised. They, 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 you know, when Dixie Carter said she, uh, you know, she's a backstabbing, um, a backstabbing, horrible human being. What happened? Your know, whole Jesse Sorensen story. You know that remind you of that, ladies and gentlemen. Jeez Louise, I, I just. Just, I can't. I just don't understand. This stuff. He is. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to say to that. That's just. That just really is the frustrating thing here. And of course, the last thing about least, I know this is something a lot of people have been saying, is that supposedly Panda Energy um, is no longer funding them. You know, which is hilarious, which that is only a, ru a rumor. But, um, you know, if this is true or not, this company sucks. I I am vile. This company just vilifies. I just can't really deal with this type of company and stuff no more. Okay. Um, we'll be right back after my little rant here. We will be, um, I will be, um, um, you know, taking, you know, talking about more ranting with a company. So we're going to be uh, taking a music break to calm us down. We need something to calm us down. So we're going to be playing a little. How about this game? We have to play this. The Dream of Electric Italians. The Plot of Plants, Love of I from Port Tomorrow 64, Portrait of a Plumber. Uh, Portrait of a Plumber. 
from the Tubes McGee was the OC remix. I hope it's on their website. Go ahead and download that album. You will not forget. Anyway, go ahead, have fun, and listen to this right quick. We'll be right back here on the Dixie Lounge. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you once more time for joining me, Duke CT, here on TalkShoe.com. We'll be right back right after this. Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me on this nice Thursday evening here on TalkShoe.com. Phone number, as always, to come in is the call in number is 724-444-7444. Let's get the number is 724-444-7444. This is the number one more time is 724-444-7444. And the call ID connecting me, Duke CT, is 9247. Let's get the call ID is 9241. Seven. Now, from one company to the X, let's talk about WWE and its odd booking decisions as of late. Do you? Does anyone know what's really happening for WrestleMania at this point? Because quite honestly, the only real couple matches here and is Triple H versus Roman Reigns. Shane McMahon uh, for the uh, WWE Championship. Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker. And Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker for the street fight. And even then, the only thing that's on its path when letting that happen is basically Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker for a Hell of a Cell match for the control of Monday Night Raw. And the Triple H Roman Reigns, and you have Brock Lesnar versus Roman, um, uh, you know, Triple H. Versus Roman Reigns, that's going to probably be sidetracked because there's Roman, uh, Triple H is getting a uh, defending his championship against Dean Ambrose at a um, WWE Network special. Uh, it's going to be at um, Roadblock, at WWE Roadblock, ladies and gentlemen. And honestly, this seems to be the match that everyone seems to want. They want three. They want this match to happen. When they were teasing at the War Rumble, the crowd was so for Dean Ambrose. They didn't even crap about Roman Reigns. When they had Lesnar versus, in fact, when the whole triple threat of Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Brock Lesnar, the main focus was Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar. Not Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Maybe because, well, they already trampled that story, but it gets to a point that they were actually just putting him in this back burner. The crowd reactions after he won the championship seem to be going faded and fading away from Roman Reigns. And stuff I talked about last week, 
is because of how the WWE has, well, made him, they made Roman Reigns look. This is a problem because this is your guy, Roman Reigns, is going to be your main pillar. He is your main pillar for the next couple of decades and next couple of years. Heck, for the next decade, he is going to be your main guy, Vince, and you're making him go through this stupid BS. Dean, on the other hand, is everyone likes him. Everyone loves him. They love his character. They are really waiting to go, but I go nuts for this guy. They love Ambrose. They love them some Ambrose. Dean Ambrose comes in. He's like, you know, when when Triple H is being Roman Reigns, the crowd cheered Roman. Uh, crowd cheered with Triple H. When they did the same beat down with Dean Ambrose, the crowd booed him. He acted more like this was actually more of an interesting, compelling fight. If they do what I think they're going to do, not what I want them to do, if they have Dean Ambrose lose to Triple H via shenanigans and then you have Roman Reigns save his little buddy, it's going to bring more, I try to have like the heat on Dean Ambrose, they're trying to have suck well the heat for Dean Ambrose and put on Roman Reigns. That's not going to work. Roman Reigns is not over. He is not going to be over by these people. You can delay all the Chicago's and all this other stuff. He will still be booed. Again, it seems like Brian Alvarez was right. He is he got who after the TLC, after everything else, he was booed again. He was booed. And when it comes to Triple H versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, after the crazy stuff that's going to happen at TakeOver the next couple of days at, but before it, Triple H will be looked upon as a god. He will be cheered out of his mind. They will be cheering him over Roman Reigns, unless they do an audible at this point. If they honestly, the part thing I want is having Triple H lose to Dean Ambrose. Roman Reigns is like will be pissed off, saying, you know, yeah, Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose. Triple H versus rematch with Triple H. Brock Lesnar saying, no, no, no. We'll still have a match with Brock Lesnar. You make those two matches, then you will have a championship match and the street fight for Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose, make it a four-way, a fatal four-way street fight for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose retains. Roman Reigns goes off, turns heel, maybe after two or three months later. And then you have your feud. You have your big feud against Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose loses what have you. His body cakes too much. And then you can finally have your Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. Big hullabaloo, big hullabaloo fight at SummerSlam. And away you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There. Booyah. And everyone will boo Roman Reigns because that's what they're supposed to do. Booyah, Kasha. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I just solved the problem. I'm waiting for my job, Vinny Mac. But then again, maybe scratch that. The way you treat your writers now, I wouldn't want your job. Wouldn't want that job. Nah. All right. But I think y'all made my, made my point, ladies and gentlemen. I think I made my point clear, brothers and sisters. So anyway, speaking of booking, what's going to happen for the tag team titles? Are they going to be defended? Um, are they going to be there at all? What's the new day going to do at WrestleMania? I mean, I really wish they had this stuff planned out. Um, you know, planned out a couple weeks in advance so they could set up stories. This seems too slapshot. I want the story set up for WrestleMania, the big collatic thing. What's Callisto doing? What's Kevin Owens doing? We might see we have Sami Zayn. We might, we might not. Who knows? What's Callisto going to be doing? He's the United States champion and he's doing tag matches. We're losing to Del Rio. Is he going to fight Del Rio again? What's happening with him with the U.S. title? I mean, we have at least a Divas championship have been, uh, basically signed for a triple threat at WrestleMania, which I am happy for. That seems to be it. The Divas title, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks. And by the way, Charlotte will probably be, I guarantee you, if this plan goes ahead, which is going to be Triple H versus Roman Reigns, which if it's going to be that way, I guarantee you, people, I guarantee you, 
Charlotte will get more face pops than Roman Reigns. Book it. Yeah. I said it. Charlotte will have more face pops than Roman Reigns. But here's hoping they'll set everything up this next Monday. That's the hope. That's my hope, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway. Well. That's it for Talking Wrestling. We're going to be talking more about the Nintendo Direct, ladies and gentlemen. How's that for you? Nintendo Direct. And see what, um, you know, what is the, you know, what was the positives, what were the negatives, and what were the things that people will say, zoo, I think, you know, people hated, it, liked, it, and what did the, the, the uh, what is, well, Nintendo acting more like WWE in some cases. Well, you know, I'll talk about that and more here on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me here on TalkShoe.com and on ManicExpression.com um, the recorded version of ManicExpression.com, iTunes, Zipcast.com, uh, uh, YouTube.com slash Duke CT, and, um, and freaking awesome network. Um, uh, yeah, those guys and gals, you guys rock. Anyway, we'll be right back and let's play a little song. Let's see, you know, let's get since it's becoming Nintendo, let's play the, the, the Mario stuff here. Let's see, uh, let's what would be a good thing here? How about, ooh, how about somebody set us up the bomb, someone, <clears throat> somebody set up. Us the Baba Bob Super Mario 64 main theme Theory of End from Super Mario 64 Portrait of a Plumber. You can hear this from OC Remix. You can download the album for free at OCRemix.com. You should do that because it is a great album and you should love it. Anyway, here you go. Hope you guys like hope you guys and gals like it here on the Duke City Lounge. We'll be right back right after this. Me talking about the Nintendo Direct. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you so much for joining me here <clears throat> on the Dixie Grounds. Thank you so much for being here. And well, well, let's talk about some positive stuff, ladies and gentlemen, because Nintendo had a Nintendo Direct today, and boys and girls, there's a lot of games, a lot of positives, a lot of negatives, a lot of crazy stuff that's going on. So, Let's look at things that they talked about, ladies and gentlemen. First, the things that I really care about. You know, I'm not going to go into the RPGs because some of the stuff, like, for example, the Tokyo Mirage Sessions, hashtag FE, I'm not into that because, then again, I'm not into the Soda series and the um, the R D Megami Tensei series. Should I get into that? Are they good games? Tell me. Because, then again, I'm not into the turn-based strategy stuff. I do see Persona 4. I would like to get into that, but I don't know. Maybe it's just eventually when I see you know something more interesting about that. Because I would like. Because is it good, bad, or eh? I don't know. I don't really like the whole turn-based strategy stuff. 
Anyway. But what we'll be talking about is Splatoon, because again, there's going to be another f- update for Splatoon. Holy crap, this game keeps on going. I know eventually they're going to have a sequel. I wouldn't be surprised on, uh, I would <clears throat> I would not be surprised if Nintendo making a sequel about this, and they will probably talk about it in E3 next year. No, E3 this year will be Splatoon. Splatoon will be, there will be a sequel to Splatoon this year. Um, I, I think that uh, will be, because this was a huge, huge hit. I would not be surprised, Splatoon will be, uh, there will be a Splatoon 2 for the Wii U or for the NX, which is something really, there's some stuff about the NX I could get into that as well, which I did get into uh, the, uh, the Nintendo Direct, which is interesting. But they're just rumors. I'll get to that later. But anyway, there's a, uh, Two new, uh, two free Splatoon updates. There are two free Splatoon updates. The first drops next week, March 8th, balances uh, some game gear, improves the matchmaking system. The second update will have brand new weapon uh, combinations from the, uh, from this, it's called the Sheldon's Picks. On also will be free as well, so that's pretty much awesome. I got to get more reason to get back to Splatoon, which is, you know, I love doing that, by the way. Next up is Super Mario Maker, which I need to get eventually. Then again, there's a lot of Wii, games, Wii U games. I got to get, um, I'll probably get the, um, uh, eventually we'll probably get Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. Because I love both games, by the way. Love them for all their flaws. Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. Um... Yeah, um, Super Mario Maker, because it looks fun. More than 6.2 million courses have been uploaded um, and such right there. And there's so much... I mean, wow. A lot of people um, have really loved this game. It gets an update March 9th to add new items to mess around this. By the way, these are free updates too, so bonus points to Nintendo. Including a key and a locked door, it actually throws in a super hard extra mode in the 100 Mario Challenge. Yeah. So, people who do those uh, Let's Plays, you know, and such like that, you got some challenges for you. Super extra mode. Yay. Lost Reavers looks very interesting. It looks like a zombie fighting, puzzle solving adventure. Looks which is interesting. And they also have an open beta coming out next month, April 14th. I might look into it. It looks fun, but I can see I'd probably get bored of it. A lot of people have with this negative though. Paper Mario Color Splash, which a lot of people are fans of dubbing it Color uh, Sticker Star 2, which is wow. A lot of people really did not like this. Like, I look, it's interesting. I love the color palette. It looks fun. And it looks very interesting and fun, and I can't wait to see more of it. It looks like just. You know, uh, a lot. It's hopefully it brings it into the more interesting stuff with Mario and and such, which I can't wait to see more stuff from it. And a lot of people are like, ah, it's gonna be the worst thing ever. But you know what? I think this is gonna be something really fun. I think this could be something really interesting. And I give the Paper Mario. I think Paper Mario is gonna be a. This thing could be very fun and exciting. That's what I feel like. Uh, Paper Car Jockey. I don't care. Uh. Azura Strike of Gun Ball 2. I saw this at MAGFest, the preview of it. Hopefully, you know, I'll have the panels uploaded this weekend. Hopefully. So we're about that, them talking about it. But this looks fun. Even though I don't have a 3DS, I will, you know, this is something I will probably, if I did want get one, I will probably get this game because it looks fun and exciting. Uh, also, Hyrule Warriors Legends, there is a suppose there's going to be more content coming. In fact, Nintendo is getting on the season pass bandwagon. There's some good, some bad, but I think Nintendo will at least have their games actually functional. And uh, speaking of, because honestly, they're going to have a huge roster anyway. So there's going to be complete with more, with more, ladies and gentlemen, more content, including from Wind Waker. Midi from Zelda, which is going to be looked to very fun because I love Wind Waker. I still have no idea people hated Wind Waker back in the day. I mean, they love it now, but man, the hate back in the day was immense. Whew. Gravy 2nd, don't care. Dragon Quest 7, don't care. Metro Pro. Oh, speaking of hate, D 
the Roman Reigns of the Nintendo... Gener- this is basically the Roman Reigns of the Nintendo Direct at this point. What's Federation Force? Jeez Louise. This game got no love when it was debuted. They hate this game. They like, this is the worst. Metro deserves better. This is horrible. We're Samus. This, that, the other. And you know, they were trying to do something. It was an online. They tried to do something new with it. And some people, oh, it's a first place shoot. I'm like, well, the first couple Prime games. They're trying to continue that, that story and gameplay from the Prime games. And I understand Metro, the last Metroid game, the real Metroid game we had was Other M. And for all the good and bad and everything else for it, it's, um... <sighs> you know, it's been a while, and people hopefully, this is like the 20, this is an anniversary year for Metroid, and they say, man, they didn't do something. So hopefully, E3, there's going to be something really good for Metroid, Something positive, something big, because a lot of people really love this character. They really love her. They really love Samus Aran. So I totally, I have hope that they might actually do something positive. Because I hope, I hope, because a lot of people might bash this game, but you never know. People bash this game about Federation Force. Uh, it's such a, it might be a good, challenging game. You have to come up with a game out there uh, with something likable. I think this could be fun. I know I have a 3DS. I have no dog in this fight, but I really wish they actually started looking at this game and be like, you know, see if what it is a fun little experience. If it's good, if it's good, if it's bad, it's bad, whatever. But I don't want to basically go without saying it's not Metroid. Well, it's not. It's Federation Force. It's a side quest. And let it live and die in its own merits. Don't go all uh, negative and aggro on something, you know, that would be on the developer's control. They've been making this since 2009. So, yeah, I think this is something really good. I, I hopeful that this thing could really be something very good. Uh, but also, um, but also a lot of people were actually hyped up for this. Star Fox! Star Fox, my friends. And not only that, but Star Fox is Guard. Star Fox Zero Guard. Two games will be bundled with each other, which is very interesting. I'll get to Guard in a minute, but this was actually something I really did. In fact, I saw a little bit of Star Fox out there with the gameplay and such, which looks really good. The, the co-op with someone piloting and other guy shooting looks really awesome, and I really think that would be really good to get people into it. And the graphics look fun. Everything looks great. About it, and it looks like they might actually go deep into the past with Star Fox. So, and um, yeah, and um, you know, I actually saw an interview with uh, with uh, let's see, it was um, uh, from the completionist talking about this game, uh, with Scare Miyamoto. And this looks to be um, something really, it's, it's Star Fox Zero, looks to be um, something very fun and exciting. Yeah, it looks like to be very fun exciting. Star Fox is so be really good. Wow. I can't wait to look at Star Fox Zero. It looks like something very fun exciting game. Everything seems to be a hyped up action game. The multiple points, multiple places for what type of game you can have. And just that type of you know gameplay. I really like that. And all the Star Fox games, for the most part, all the good ones anyway. Multiple pathways, multiple ways you can do games, uh, and, you know, multiple ways to do it. You know, that's why I love Star Fox 64. I played this part, the middle path. We went to the middle path. You went to this, uh, the left and the right. All that stuff. It was so much fun. I loved it. Loved it. But anyway, but also, Star Fox Guard looks something was actually talked about E3. It was on E3 uh, a couple years ago. And this looks to be something very fun, and it seems to be more of a puzzle type. It's a tower defense where you have Flippy, you know, more annoying person from the Star Fox team, and his uncle Grippy. Great name, just great names, great names, great names. Um, as you are battling your energy cameras to. Battle villains and such. You will battle villains and such, and you know, 
robots and stuff with cameras using um um you know light uh, with uh, stationary guns to, to guard and make sure um your tower is defended. They have over a hundred levels, but also you can share things online, have bets. It's basically somewhat of a Super Mario Maker too, where you can actually share your um uh, actually battle maps too, which is very interesting. I think this is gonna be really fun. Um, I might actually when I when I do get the game, maybe I'll actually next month, which hopefully it's gonna be more of a. I think it's gonna be very fun to pick up. I can't wait to look at that. I think it's gonna be something really good. Um, uh, you know, something really positive. So I can't wait for that. Um, this I think this is gonna be something really good. A lot of people can't wait for Star Fox and Star Fox games. I think a lot of people can't wait to play that game. It looks fun and it's exciting. And I like the Amino Sport where you can put the Star Fox Amino where you go right back to the SNES um, you know, look to it. Speaking of SNES, there's going to be a lot of classic Super Nintendo games exclusive to the new 3DS handheld, which is going to be the Super Mario Kart. I wonder if they can have online play for that as well. They're just going to keep it single player. Um, also, a new Kirby game as well. Um, it's called um, Kirby Planet Robobot, which looks fun. I hopefully they can make this a um, you know. I'm like you know, I'm really chosen now for it. get a 3DS because it looks actually fun to get. So um, I am very pumped to see that. So anyway, thank you um, for Nintendo for actually getting some stuff out there. It looks really fun. It looks really exciting. Are you sure that I actually did enjoy this Nintendo Direct, even though most people looked at this Nintendo Direct and, you know, was like, minus five stars in some places. But honestly, I think it was a good, fun Direct. Some of the stuff didn't interest me, but some of the stuff that did interest me got me into it and such. And I can't wait to see more, and I think there'll probably be a lot more coming in E3, coming in the next couple months, and months from now. So who knows what the next Nintendo Direct is going to be. Hopefully more positive. Hopefully there'll be more interesting stuff on the new Zelda title, which is supposed to come out this year or next year with the NX. And speaking of NX, there's rumors now. Rumors that the NX... Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, X Beyond... There was Nintendo DX. Um, according to stuff like that, a lot of people are saying this, that Beyond Good and Evil 2, the most bomb sequel ever, rumors that they're actually doing the same thing What's the same situation with the Bayonetta 2. They're funding Beyond Good and Evil 2, which is, you know, this is everything else. Ubisoft keeps saying the project has been canned, but it seems to be this rumor, there's so much of these rumors coming out. Destructoid, IGN's reporting on it. Um, they're making this, it's supposedly um, the source here. Uh, there's like, actually, there's a lot of sources, including the uh, um, who do have uh, basically uh, been talking about this thing that is supposedly a similar situation for Bandit 2. That, that has been uh, talked about that no one seems to be secured. They secured. This would be one heck of a killer app. But here's the question. It's the same thing that people, if it's not much of a huge seller. Um, I'm going to say this right now for the NX. It's nice, but that's, to me, it's a more, I feel like they're becoming more niche. Um, Beyond Good and Evil was great and all. I got it back in 03. Um, I bought full price for 50 bucks. I said, ah, God, I think I should wait for it. It was 40 or 50. I have it. I still have it. It's fun. But it was a niche title. It didn't sell well. And there's a lot of hype for the sequel. But will people go and buy consoles for it? I'm talking real people who buy consoles and everything else. And what about me? Do I have to get an NX to just play this game? Will it be a Will the Wii U version be a downgradable title? Well, I don't know what the NX is going to be about. So, what's it going to do? Am I screwed? I have to wait till probably till E3 2016 
to really figure this stuff out. But if this is true, this is a good ga- catch with Nintendo. But I wonder, I really do wonder if this is going to be more of a system seller, like say this is like going to bring like, oh my gosh, you know, the same levels of sales that it will probably bring to, say, like um, my other system sellers will be. Will it be? I don't know. But I think it will be something very interesting. Because as a fan, I will probably, probably, uh, probably, 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 yeah. As a fan, I will probably get this game. I will play it, and it will probably be great, but I worry because I just think it's going to be Beyond Good and Evil 2. Um, the game is currently signed with the working title Beyond Good and Evil, The Prejudices uh, of Philosophers, which is you know a reference to a specific chapter in the philosophical text Beyond Good and Evil by Friedrich Nietzsche. Frederick. Nishi. I'm mispronouncing that. I apologize. Which details how morality can be altered by authority. In a ways, black and white morality overlooks the logic complexity of the, of the nature of morals. Which is something really interesting. So, yeah. <coughs> but here's the question. And I ought to put this out because, again, Beyond Good and Evil was a critical success but a commercial failure. And the title will be a perfect, but yet this is again, um, you know, you know, it's something would be a good move for, but will it be a system seller? I don't think so. Well, who knows? Maybe because I do love Bayonetta too. So, you know, uh, Bayonetta too, sold some units, but I don't think it was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go get this game. But that's just my personal thing. Anyway, that's what the the rumors are. I'll put the link for the Destructoid link in the description, as always, as I do, because I am a good person who likes to do these things that I to give you the links to follow after you watch my little podcast spiel on YouTube and so on and so forth. Once again, thank you so much for being here. On the Duke City Islands. Well, that was a great segue. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for listening. I uh, will hopefully this podcast will be up soon because I have so much stuff. The panels I had to upload and yada yada yada. So, yeah, it's going to be a very fun and bumpy ride this weekend. Hopefully that and uh, the Duke. My last year standing season four premiere has been pushed back. Um, uh, pushed up actually. I probably will try to get it done. Hopefully the twelfth. That is, you know, I will probably get this thing hopefully before the season two premiere Daredevil. I, I'm looking at Electra, my season, my next season premiere. My season four? Yeah, season four premiere, the last review is standing. From the road, crazy road. So hopefully everything works out and some other things. I think I'm really feeling okay here. Anyway, this is uh, Dixie T here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all. Later.